Hello everybody and welcome to today's video tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to do some gaming montage effects inside of HitFilm 4 Express. So let's begin. First of all, I'd just like to say that if you didn't already know, the music for this video was by Oniva, or however you pronounce that, and it's called Platform 9. You can listen to it on NCS. And the video footage that I used came from popular YouTubers. Of course, in your own gaming montage, it's best to be shooting your own footage, so make sure you choose your footage with the best tricks, no scopes, etc. to make your gaming montage look awesome. This tutorial will be rated 4 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale, because some of the concepts that I'll be teaching you will be kind of difficult, and it'll be a lot of assumed knowledge in this video. So the first thing that we're going to be going through is the colour grade that I've used on all of the clips in the video. I've used a simple levels histogram effect, and I've lifted the contrast, and I've also lifted up the blacks. I've also added a lot of blue into the shadows. This way I've got a pretty neutral looking grade. The introduction text was also kind of easy, just normal text timed to the beat of the music with the glow on it, and the final platform 9 text was a similar thing, but also with a chrominate effect and a zoom blur effect, and two light flares. One of the light flares was a microparticle streak effect. This is a really nice light flare because it has lots of different, well, microparticles, which provide really good atmosphere. I keyframed the pivot position around, so that the microparticles themselves moved around, but the actual position of the flare remained in the same place. Now some of the cool effects that I used was this desaturate kind of transition, which I'll show you now. You can recreate this effect by dragging a hue, saturation and lightness effect onto your video, and then adding keyframes for the saturation, so that at the beginning the saturation is just normal, a couple of frames in when the shot happens, it's at 0%, there's no saturation, and then it slowly fades back to normal. I've also keyframed the scale at the same times, so that it zooms in when the saturation gets low. Make sure to turn on motion blur in this layer, because that way you get a really nice blur and a really nice zoom in instead of it being jittery and uncinematic. A large portion of the success of your gaming montage is how well the gunshots time to the beat of the music. The way that I've timed the beat of the music with my gunshots is with the Rate Stretch tool, with a technique that I talked about already in another video. I will link the video in the description below, so make sure you go check that out if you want to see how to do the timing of the gunshots. That's very important by the way, so if you do not know how to do that, then make sure you go and see that video. What I cover in that video is a pretty simple kind of speed change, but there's also one which I use in this video called Velocity. I believe the name Velocity comes from the actual Velocity effect in Vegas. This differs from the Rate Stretch tool because with the Rate Stretch tool, it's sudden and you have to cut the video where you want the different speeds to be. With the Velocity effect, you can keyframe the speed. In HitFilm 4 Express, the Velocity effect is just called Speed. I've used the Speed effect in the beginning of the video, right here. and also kind of near the end of the video as well. The speed effect works like this. By default, the speed effect is set to 1. This means that the footage plays back at 100% speed, or normal speed. By lowering the number, the footage plays back slower, and by raising the number, the footage plays back faster. You can raise and lower the number with keyframes to the beat of your music, and this way, to the beat of your music, your video moves at different speeds. It's easy to use the velocity effect to time some portions of your video with the beat of the music, but if you want to time specific times in your video to specific times in the music, for example specific gunshots to specific beats of the music with the velocity effect or with the speed effect, it's a bit harder. You have to manually change the speed effect until the gunshots are in the right place. Here's a quick example that I just edited. First of all, you have to make sure that the first beat is lined up with the first gunshot like normal, regardless of the speed effect. Then you can add the speed effect, and make sure you set a keyframe at that point, at that first gunshot and at that first beat of music. Then on the back beat, so not the next beat where you want the next gunshot to be, but on the back beat before that, set a keyframe for it to be faster. 
Don't worry exactly what this keyframe will be, because we'll mess around with it later. Then set another keyframe on the actual beat where the gunshot will be, the beat after that, and set it to be 0.5. This means it'll play back at half speed. Set another keyframe after this, it doesn't really matter exactly how much after this, but make sure you set it to be back at 100% speed. Now you have to go and mess around with that backbeat keyframe, the second keyframe, the one that is sped up. And you have to mess around with that, keep raising it or lowering it, until that second gunshot or that third keyframe lines up with that beat properly. It's pretty hard to get it right, so there's a lot of tweaking needs to be going on and it takes a while to get it perfect. Now, if that wasn't hard enough, the speed effect doesn't affect the audio. So, you're going to need to find some kind of gun sound effect online, and then drop that into your video as well. The velocity effect, or the speed effect, is pretty advanced, and it takes some time to get your head around it. So, if you can't get it immediately, don't worry. We're just going to go over a couple of other effects that I've used in this video. Firstly, we're going to go through motion blur. In some areas of the video where I've sped things up between gunshots, it looks kind of jittery without motion blur. So, what I did was I added the motion blur effect to make it look more real life and more cinematic. If you add the motion blur effect to a clip in the editor, then it's going to default to motion blur from the comp settings, but since you're in the editor, not a composite shot, these settings won't be there. You need to go over and select custom to select a custom setting. The shutter angle is the most basic and defines pretty much how much motion blur you have. Even though the motion blur does take quite a while to render, you can increase or decrease the samples to change the quality. And there you have all of these really cool effects that I've used in this gaming montage. I also used a couple of cool editing tricks in this. So, for example, this quick three shot right here. And this one here. As well as some other cool tricks which don't really come from fancy editing and visual effects, but more of just a simple idea which can be pretty effective. I also recommend you watch other gaming montages so you can gain inspiration from them and try copying some of their effects inside of HitFilm. If you did like this video, be sure to click the like button. If you know anyone who you want to share it with, go ahead and share it with them. And of course, if you want more videos just like this, please subscribe for more content just like this. I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.